Tonight, incredible new details from former FBI Director, Deputy Director Andrew McCabe's new book. And we get reaction from Congressman Tom Malinowski, the Jersey Democrat who served on the Foreign Affairs Committee and also previously State Departments. Then the Vatican holding a summit to deal with the crisis whirling the church. The abuse scandals, a nationally recognized expert and advocate for children, joins us to discuss what's going on and where we go from here. Also, new fallout from Amazon's decision to cancel plans for a headquarters in New York City. We'll explain why the city didn't just lose out on a tech company, there could also be a major ripple effect. Even everybody, Welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French, and thank you for joining us this Wednesday evening. We begin tonight with the Mueller probe. CNN saying the report could be completed as early as next week. Special counsel regulations say the, Mueller the Mueller's team must submit a confidential report to the attorney general, but rules do not require it to be shared with Congress and then hopefully we the people. But CNN reporting that Barr does plan to submit at least a summary to lawmakers. Still an open question what we the people would see and whether a summary, summary excuse me, would even be sufficient for lawmakers on the Hill. We're also getting President Trump's reaction to the Bombshell Times report about his former attorney and fixer, Michael Cohen. The paper saying Trump asked acting attorney general Matthew Whitaker to have the Southern District of New York take the lead on the Cohen probe. By the way, Trump ally Jeffrey Berman, he would have been the lead of said probe. Now, that report raised all sorts of questions about possible obstruction of justice. Here is the commander in chief's reaction. No, not at all. I don't know who gave you that. That's more fake news. A lot of there's a lot of fake. There's a lot of fake news out there. No, I did. What is the current status of the relationship with Mr. Whitaker? Very good. I have a lot of respect for Mr. Whitaker. I think he's done a great job. Uh, it's a very, very straight shooter. President also responded to allegations made by Andrew McCabe specifically, where the forming actor, former acting FBI director said that they were considering rallying support for the 25th Amendment that would remove the president from office. Here again, our president. I think Andrew McCabe has made a fool out of himself over the last couple of days, and he really looks to me like sort of a poor man's J. Edgar Hoover. He's a, uh, I think he's a disaster. And what he was trying to do was terrible, and he was caught. I'm very proud to say we caught him. So we'll see what happens. But he, uh, he is a disgraced man. Well, joining me now to discuss that and more, New Jersey Democrat Congressman Tom Malinowski. He serves on the Foreign Affairs Committee and also he was on President Clinton's National Security Council. Malinowski, also Assistant Secretary of State in the Obama administration. Let's start with some of the alarming revelations from former acting FBI director Andrew McCabe. Here he is on CNN just last night. Do you still believe the president could be a Russian asset? I think it's possible. I think that's why we started our investigation. And I'm really anxious to see where Director Mueller concludes that. So, Congressman, from your perspective, have you seen enough in the last couple of years to believe this is a legitimate concern, our president being a Russian asset? I, I think it was a totally legitimate concern from the standpoint of FBI agents who had been seeing month after month after month uh, President Trump's team in the campaign meeting with Russian officials, um, Russia at the same time interfering in our elections, and the president-elect uh, uh, in those uh, early weeks and, and after he, he was inaugurated, uh, repeatedly taking positions that were sympathetic to Russia, and then trying to shut down the FBI investigation of what was going on. I, I can imagine uh, that they would have been incredibly alarmed. So given your experience in foreign policy and intelligence, please speak to the significance of the McCabe allegation that the president believed Vladimir Putin over our own intelligence with respects to a North Korean missile test. I, th this is something that I don't think has ever happened in the history of the United States, that a president of the United States would believe the leader of one of our adversaries, Russia, over the judgment of the men and women of our intelligence community, of our military. If this had been Barack Obama uh, trusting Putin or the Chinese leader over 
the CIA or our military, the, the Congress, Republicans in Congress, would be screaming bloody murder. And I think all of us, whether whatever political party we belong to, we are Americans first. We want to be sure that the President of the United States is putting the interests of our country first and not uh, placing the opinion of some foreign leader uh, over the, the dedicated patriotic men and women who are supposed to be giving him this information. You know, next for me is, and this may be the most significant, if you believe what Mr. McCabe is saying right now, he went to a bipartisan group of lawmakers on the Hill leadership in both the House and the Senate, and he told them about his very plan here to launch an investigation. Take a listen. The purpose of the briefing was to let our congressional leadership know exactly what we'd been doing. Opening a case of this nature, not something that an FBI director, not something that an acting FBI director would do by yourself, right? This was a recommendation that came to me from my team. I reviewed it with our lawyers. I discussed it at length Did with you the tell Deputy Congress? Attorney General. And I told Congress what we had done. Did anyone object? That's the important part here, Savannah. No one objected. Not on legal grounds, not on constitutional grounds, and not based on the facts. So, Representative, what does it tell you that the gang of eight here, again, a bipartisan group, Republicans and Democrats, were briefed about the probe of Trump and the administration, and if you at least believe McCabe, nobody, including the Republicans, objected? Yeah, so you got some Republicans in Congress right now who are saying that somehow the FBI was engaged in some coup against the President of the United States just because they were investigating what Russia did uh, to interfere in our election. Well, the congressional leaders, including Republicans, were briefed on this as it was happening. None of them objected at the time. If they think that this is so horrible, uh, which it wasn't, but if they think so, why didn't they say anything at the time when they were being briefed by the FBI? And if the FBI was engaged in some sort of unconstitutional coup, I don't think they would have been briefing the Congress about it in real time. All right, let me pivot now and get to some foreign policy questions that are in the news today. We now learn that Vladimir Putin is threatening to target the United States if we put missiles in Europe. What should our policy be? We, we should absolutely not have pulled out of the INF Treaty, the treaty that governs the placement of nuclear intermediate range nuclear weapons in, in Europe. Russia was violating that treaty, but that doesn't mean that you pull out of the treaty. It's kind of like saying that if somebody robs a bank, we tear up the law against robbing banks. That treaty, that law, in effect, was what allows us to hold Russia accountable for its violations, and now Russia is completely off the hook. Uh, so it's something that I don't, I just do not understand what, what they were thinking. Uh, and I hope it's reversed. Next question on foreign policy. You have House Democrats probing a proposed U.S. nuclear power deal that would have exported technology to the Saudis. What does it say about our relationship with the Saudis that we were looking to sell them this significance of a deal here, again, with nuclear power, particularly given the past that we gave them or the administration did over the killing of Khashoggi? I we seem to be giving the Saudis pass after pass after pass. They kill a journalist who lived in the United States, dismembering him in, a, in an embassy. Uh, they have been engaged in a, in a very destructive war in Yemen that has killed tens of thousands of civilians. Uh, and here it looks like um, they were seeking to, to do what we have been trying to punish Iran for doing, which is to build uh, up their nuclear program with help from the Trump administration. Uh, you know, it doesn't help that uh, President Trump and his family have done business with the Saudis for many, many years, uh, and President Trump, unlike every previous president, has not divested himself of his business interests. So he continues to make a profit personally from his family's dealings with Saudi Arabia. Uh, I, I think that the new House of Representatives uh, is uh, going to have a lot to say about uh, all of this in the coming weeks. And now, finally, I want to get your take on who's minding the store, if you will, about two key players in this administration, one maybe on the way out and one that doesn't seem ready for the gig.
Director of National Intelligence Dan Coats and Acting Defense Secretary Pat Shanahan. Now, Coates, as I said, he could be shown his walking papers if we believe the headlines, Congressman, because he's been a straight shooter and been at odds with Trump about what the reality is on the ground versus the administration's talking points. And conversely, you've got Shanahan, um, who's the acting Secretary of Defense here, who at least according to hearings by Republicans too, is not ready for prime time. How concerned are you after all the resignations, all the firings here, that we don't have the right team in place when it comes to national security? I've, I've met with the acting Secretary of Defense. I think he's a nice guy, but he's totally not up to the job. I don't think there, there's almost nobody left with the resignation of Secretary Mattis inside the administration who can stand up to Trump, who can tell him you can't you can't do crazy things that are going to hurt America's national security. And that means the only real check is coming from the Congress of the United States, especially from the House of Representatives. And, and we are going to exercise that check in the next two years, making sure we don't pull out of NATO, that we don't pull our troops out of South Korea just because Kim Jong-un makes some promises to us that he's not going to keep, making sure that we keep standing up for human rights around the world uh, and that we stand with our allies and not with our adversaries. That's going to be a tall order, but I think the Congress of the United States is, is ready to perform its constitutional duty. Congressman, thank you very much. All right, when we come back, we will switch gears. The Vatican holding a first-of-its-kind summit to deal with the crisis of church abuse. Now, critics, they're saying this is too little too late. When we come back, we'll have the details and also one of the leading authorities and the experts who helped break open the crisis in Pennsylvania, and now we're seeing this play out nationwide. So.